So we are going to do multimodal learning for exactly that reason. We want to ground our uh, language models. We want to ground them with videos. We want to ground them with images. We want to ground them with the speech so that they have at least seen something. If they are talking about something, they have seen it before. So we are moving towards general AI, but we are taking tiny steps, okay? Uh, let's start with this paper, Long-Term Recurrent Convolutional Networks for Visual Re Recognition and Description. It's gonna be called LRCN, and this is gonna stand for Long-Term Recurrent Convolutional Networks. What are we gonna try to do? We are gonna try, don't worry about that figure, I'm going to talk about it in more details, but what are the tasks? For instance, it could be activity recognition. Somebody gives you a video, and then you want to know what that video is about. For instance, this person is applying eye makeup. That's activity recognition. We can have image description. An image goes in, and a sentence is going to come out, a description. For instance, that's the image of a building, and this is going to be a large building with a clock on the front of it or you can have video description. A video goes in and a sentence is gonna come out to describe the video. Now this is about images and languages. So now you have two modes. One is an image, the other mode is a language. And that's why it's called multimodal. These are the tasks, video description, image caption generation, video description task. For action recognition, you have a video and a video you can think of it as consecutive uh, snapshots or consecutive images. So these are images, image one up until image T. And then you want to know the corresponding label, the corresponding action. Somebody could give you an image and then you can ask for a description of the image. So now the input is an image, the output is a sequence of words. Or it could be a video goes in and uh, a description of the video is gonna come out. So it's going to be a sequence to sequence, but the first sequence is a sequence of images. This is a sequence of words. And it can have different types. It could be that a sentence is going to go in, and then you want to draw that uh, image. It could be a sentence going in and an image coming out. So you can have all sorts of multimodal frameworks. So let's see what we want to do. VT is the visual input. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. These are your images. You take VT and you push it through a convolutional neural network. So don't worry about the structure of the convolution. For now, think about it as a feature extractor. An image goes in and a vector in RD is going to come out, a d-dimensional vector. So you take an image, you push it through your CNN, uh, vector is going to come out. Now you turn your images into sequences of vectors. Now we can work with vectors. Working with images was harder. We borrowed some CNN to turn them into vectors. So now these are vectors. So I talked about this CNN part, the, about the prediction part. It has its own parameters, Ws. So these are parameters, W1, W2, W3, etc. And then we know that we are usually doing some softmax at the end. Maybe you're doing a softmax here if you're doing classification. Or if you're outputting, outputting a sentence, you're going to have softmax for all of these. Okay, so I told you what is the input, and how you process the input, what is your output, and then what are we going to use? In between, we are going to use recurrent neural networks. Now everything is in terms of vectors. You're going to have a recurrent neural network. I'm not going to go into details because this one we covered thousands of times up until now. Or you can use a fancy version with some fancy activations. You can use LSTMs. I think I'm going to stop here and continue next session. For those of you who have questions, you are more than welcome to stay and ask. And for those of you who want to leave, you can leave. I have a question. Sure. So I suppose that there's uh, weight sharing. So CNNs all have the same weights and also the LSTMs and the Ws in the end? The Ws could be a specific to the output, but you are right. These LSTMs share parameters and the CNN. It's the same CNN. So, okay, so that makes sense. But uh, the W, you said that each task, we might have a different W? Yes. So that one, I'm being a little bit vague about it for good okay. reasons. Okay, that sounds good. Because we want to have the same framework solving activity recognition, image description, and video description. And you see there are different tasks slightly. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Sure. I had a quick question as well. Um, 
for this visual for this uh this vector of features from the visual input if are we always assuming that the visual input is uh, multiple frames or could this vector just be phi one phi sub one uh it could be see that depends so i'm keeping it general for now and then we are going to solve video activity recognition then that needs to be a sequence if you want to do image caption generation, then you're going to have only one image and it's going to be replicated. It's going to be the same image, you copy it and mm -hmm. replicate it. Or it could be video description. It's a video and then the output is a sentence. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? In this diagram, the, um, the W1 and W2 and W3, those, those represent layers? These represent parameters for the output when you want to predict. See, the output, the softmax is going to have its own parameters. Okay. So these oh, so W's those, here are... They represent the W, W, Z, C. Yes. And the Z, T would be the output of the LSTM at the first arrow or second arrow or third arrow. Yes. So here are your Z, T's. So okay. Z, T is going to get multiplied by W, 1. And then it's going to... Actually, Z, 1 is going to get multiplied by W, 1. And it's going to give you the output. Yeah the probability of whatever size that you have. This could Perfect. be your vocabulary size. Makes sense. Um, that's all I had, thank you. Yeah, sure.